This is a man in a relationship with two women. Meet Megan, Kevin, and Alana, who have been together for four years. When I saw their story on social media, I was hooked. In a world where over 50% of marriages end in divorce, this trio has one of the most uniquely sexual, suspenseful, healthy, and wild relationships that got them on national TV. I needed answers. So I traveled to Denver, Colorado to spend a day with this polyamorous couple who started their journey by adding another woman to their relationship despite a 10-year age difference. This is one day one life. <laughs> All right, so we have Kevin. What's up, man? What's up, man? We're in a polyamory couple relationship. Yeah. How does this all work? This is Alana. Alana and I were together from 2017. Uh, we downloaded an app, and then in 2020, we met Megan. And in 2021, Megan moved in with us, and yeah, we've been living together ever since. People have this preconceived notion of this type of relationship. So they have in their idea, the man is like master manipulator or pulling the strings to like control this type of relationship. Or for us, it was very organic. Mm. Like Alana talked to me about, hey, I think I like women. I've been attracted to women pretty much my whole life. And because of the relationship, we shared is like, man, that took a lot of courage for her to feel comfortable enough to say that to me. If it's with me, fucking cool. If it's <laughs> not, like, okay, but I ultimately want her to be happy. So when I told my family, my dad was okay. He he wasn't thrilled. Uh, when I told my mom, she didn't take it well. Uh, she kind of cut off ties with me for about two and a half years. And we just recently started having conversations again. But it's very shallow. Yeah. How do, you, how do you guys get ready? It's pretty much what you see right now is we all try and get ready together. There's a lot of elbow bumping and <laughs> um, hip bumping going on. But yeah, you know, we take turns with the shower. And then when one person's out, one person's getting ready and just keep going. Living with two women, they have a lot of lotions, perfumes, uh, <laughs> a lot of things. So we all wanted the opportunity to sleep next to each other, right? And the only way we could figure out how to do that was like every night, let's just change rotations. It, it was weird, and especially the middle, the body heat from two people on the outside. In the summers, man, it gets really hot. <laughs> All right, so we're in Saturday. What do you guys usually do on weekends? Somebody make breakfast and somebody doesn't? Like, how does that work? I yeah. mean, on the weekends, a lot of times Megs will, she'll whip something up or we just kind of grab on our own whatever we've got. I mean, normally the weather is amazing and we'd be out like going on a hike, going fishing, doing something like that. But in this case, definitely coffee and food. There's this newer coffee shop that we just found uh, right next to a bakery, just right down the road. Let's do it. Let's do it. Now. All right. We know what it's like for a monogamy couple to go about a day and spend time together in public, but a polyamory couple is something I've been curious about. But what about driving? Are, Kevin, are you always driving or? No. no. If we want to get there safely and slowly, I'll drive. If we want to get there fast, Megan drives. That's right. And if you want to get there, Late, Alana drives. That's right. <laughs> Hi. Um, just one of those little honey cinnamon scones, please. Yeah, you got it. How do you guys go about deciding like who's gonna pay? Usually, he's ready yeah. because he has it right up front. We have yeah. our faces. I'm strapped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Have you guys ever had anybody come up and be like, okay, what's the deal here? And you guys don't know who they are? Not, in, not approach us, but like they'll be people staring at us. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, like, like giving us dirty like looks. Talking to one another. Yeah. It is weird though, like going out because just holding your partner's hand in public, you don't think of it. Yeah. It's just normal. And then when you have another partner and you're holding two people's hands, it's, it still feels normal. But for the rest of society or, you know, the world, people that's not a common thing you see so you're just holding your hand going about your day not trying to draw attention but inadvertently you are yeah. it is something we've had to adapt to yeah. yeah people do find fascinating that just it's just our normal everyday life and we forget that yeah that's not the norm for other people yeah. i guess yeah. even when we we posted a video showing 
us rotating in the car of like one person always has to sit in the back and someone was like I didn't even consider that yeah. like I didn't think about that or someone was like you need to get an old school car with the bench the seat bench in the front seat. you can all sit together all the time Okay, so we got a pretty diverse grocery <laughs> list here. We got pizza, sushi, sushi. Well, kind of. So I'm going pizza. I'm going bad. I'm focusing heavy on carbs today. Okay. You right. know, Greece right. primarily. Yeah. Where Megan's going healthier, going healthier. alternative options. Going healthy. Going option. more garden. I'm don't... somewhere in between. I got a meatball and I got some salads. So. It's all right. Everyone's in a different mood for everybody today. Right. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> okay, so you guys go on dates, just y'all two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the yeah. time. But like, if one of us has to work or one of us is studying, like, me and Alana will go and like get our nails done or we'll go shopping. Because alone time is a big thing, obviously. Mm -hmm. And so is that a part of the reason why you do separate dates that allows you to have that separation when needed? It's almost like we don't schedule it, which some yeah. polyamorous couples yeah. do. They will actually mm. schedule that time. But for us, it just kind of blows and we end up getting that yeah. like time to ourselves. And then like, let's say that you and Kevin go on a date and then you and Kevin go on a date. Mm. You guys all sync very well one-on-one, -on -one, but then obviously mm. three-in-one. Is that yeah. Yeah, I think I mean, we got lucky by like our personalities just kind of melds. Yeah. Yeah. Like no matter what the combination is, wow. which is really cool. With this being three people in one relationship, I questioned what are the nicknames for each one of them in the relationship? What's everyone's nickname? <laughs> <sighs> we haven't separated them yet, so it's always yeah. like I'll call out babe. Yeah. And then they'll both respond. <laughs> there are a couple though that like are specific, like between yeah, and I mean, things, like we both call each other boo. Yeah. Like I don't really call Kev that. Yeah, I don't think I've ever called Kev. I call him like Bubba. I don't really call you Bubba. No, you <laughs> do not. <laughs> don't you dare call me Bubba. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So do y'all come to mountains a lot on the weekends, days, just whenever? Or? Yeah, a lot of time after work, if we get off on a reasonable hour, we'll, uh, we'll just head into the mountains. And almost every weekend when there's good weather or when it's snowing, yeah. we try and get out there. <laughs> Have you guys had like, you know, certain fights between you know, Megan and Kevin and you're not included in this. So how does this kind of go down to get that solved? And how do you feel not being part of it? As like there are a lot of times that maybe two people get into something. And for us, we found it really important to not have the third person enter that argument as like, taking sides because then one person could feel ganged up on. Like even if you do agree with one of the two people, if you are going to help out in that argument and try to resolve it, it's really important to be more of like a mediator and try to help be like, okay, well, I see this perspective. Cause sometimes when you're in a fight, like you see red, you're just like, <laughs> I can't see it from your side. Like, so it is almost helpful having a third person to be like, hey, well, I don't think they meant it this way. Mm -hmm. And like you can help that other person see that. Yeah, like um, you get a different perspective right away because yeah. they actually witness what happened. Research shows that the number one cause of divorce is communication breakdown. And seeing how they have made a very clear plan to prevent arguments that involves all three of them expands their ability to show love in the love language that each of them values. So part of me, I was down and out and nothing <laughs> seemed to come my way. At the coffee shop, we discuss like love languages, but what are they? We didn't discuss that. <laughs> yeah, top is quality time. Yeah, second is physical touch. Okay. Acts of service and then gifts. Okay. So, oh, what is a quality time? Like, Primarily the three of us together, because like I said, we all mesh really well. We love to spend time. If we were to choose, we choose time for the three of us. So just that quality time, and for us, like, a big part of that quality time is hiking or fishing, being in nature, camping when we get a chance to do that. I found out it was their four year date anniversary and I wanted to give them a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so I know Kevin, he doesn't like surprises. It's true. Why is that? I just, I just like being in the know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go out to eat okay. at a really cool spot. You guys don't dress like you're going to the gym, but don't dress too fancy because everyone's got different personalities, different styles here. So I'm excited to see how it goes down. All right, <laughs> we're spicing it up tonight. That's right, let's do it. Shake it up. Party time. Woo! Okay, so it's their fourth fourth year anniversary. We're gonna see if, see if they do like a celebration on this. So, excuse me? Do you guys do like a celebration desserts? Okay. 
it's their uh, their fourth year anniversary. Ultimately, I think the, the main tipping point of the decision for me was is I know how I feel with Alana. I know how I feel with Megan. I know how they feel with each other and with me. We know we have something special. We, we know we have something real and strong. What are we going to do with that? Are we going to just push that to the side and just say, well, maybe people aren't going to understand. Maybe this, maybe, 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 maybe in a negative sense, right? You're, you're, all these what ifs happen, but there were other what ifs and other maybes that that came to mind after of like, maybe this is so special and a once in a lifetime opportunity that we get to cultivate this kind of love and be in this type of relationship. We are each living our own lives on this planet and we don't know what comes after this. Like no one has that answer. So you have to live this life on earth to its fullest and whatever that means to you, I think you just have to go with it. Spending a day and diving deeper into a polyamorous relationship was something I thought I'd never do. I had to step out of my comfort zone to question everything I knew about love and find the truth. Right or wrong isn't determined by societal labels, it's determined by what makes you comfortable. To expand the growth of humanity, we need minds that question everything, to understand everyone, and to know the truth of what love actually is to us. So that was a full day. Thank you guys so much. Really, really appreciate it. So. I want to really thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. That fun, was awesome. So. Yeah, yeah, we had a blast. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Man. Seriously, give you guys all a hug. <laughs> More to come. Yes. Cool. Thank, thank you all. Thank you so much. All right. Let's go to bed. Yeah.